The 2022 Reds were atrocious. They lost 100 games, losing in ways that many would say were unexplainable. The Pirates are no hit, but win the game. By no means were they even close to contending. They had a bad roster with not a lot of talent. Joey Votto was riding off of his last limb, which contributed to a bad team. And at the trade deadline, they sold off pieces, with the main piece being Luis Castillo. He had a 2.86 ERA and 14 appearances. This only meant one thing. The Reds were about to get a lot worse. By no means was this going to be a small trade. In fact, trading Luis Castillo was huge. The Reds were building their team from the ground up getting a new number one prospect into their pipeline. Shortstop Noel V. Marte. The year finished, and Marte finished the season in single A. Considering he was still 21 years old, he would likely progress through the farm system a lot quicker than a normal rookie. But in the meantime, the 2023 Reds had many infield options. We saw breakouts from so many different players, from Spencer Steer to Matt McLean and more. This infield was unbelievable. The Reds' future went from being filled with uncertainty to quickly rising up the standings. Cincinnati became the team that everyone was rooting for, unless you were a Pirates, Brewers, Cardinals, or Cubs fan, but we'll ignore them. Marte was still in the minor leagues, performing well, but he was no longer the number one prospect on the team. A Dominican shortstop by the name of Ellie De La Cruz was making a splash across the minor leagues. He became the number four prospect in the entire league, and the Reds quickly formed one of the youngest, one of the brightest infields in MLB. Ellie De La Cruz was sensational in his very first 30 games, becoming one of the most talked about players and hyped up players across the league, hitting for a 325 average and 16 RBIs in those 30 games. One of those games, he even hit for the cycle to put them on their 12th win in a row. Two months later, they finally caught up Noel V. Marte. He hit super well, earning himself a 316 average in 35 games. While the Reds may have missed out on the playoffs, they certainly did not miss out on momentum to build off of. Because the ball was fully in their court in 2024. The NL Central is so unique because no one knows what to expect next year. Are they going to be the worst division? Or a good division? Are the Pirates finally going to win? Are the Brewers going to find a way to somehow win? Will the Cardinals come back? Have the Cubs improved? All of these questions will determine how tough that this division is. But the analysis that I would give is that it is literally anyone's division. Anyone who is serious about winning and anyone who seriously wants it will win the NL Central. The Reds would check all of those boxes. A young team with potential and they are playing with eagerness, with a lot of swagger and a lot of fun players. They have a pitcher who averages a 101 fastball, a shortstop who can develop into a superstar, along with many other talented players. Going into spring training, the optimism was very high for Reds fans. The Cubs and the Reds have been considered going neck and neck in the NL Central. The Reds went and signed two players in the offseason, one of them being Frankie Montes. If you guys remember, just two years ago, he had a 3.18 ERA and 19 starts. They also added Jamer Candelario, a veteran third baseman who was coming off of a good year offensively. The fan morale has been at its highest, and so far early on in spring training, Ellie De La Cruz has a 400 batting average and a 1200 OPS in 20 at-bats. You know, a small sample size, but it's still exciting to see younger guys perform, even if it still is spring training. And then, we had Noel V. Marte. Well, he is hitting 300 in 10 at-bats, things are still going really rocky for him and the Reds, as Marte has officially tested positive for taking PEDs. You heard that right, Marte is on steroids. He's officially suspended for a total of 80 games in this season. All of this comes back from the fact that he is from the Dominican Republic. And if there's one thing that you should know about that country, it's that steroids are fully legal. This results in these players coming into America, and they're in MLB, but they're still taking steroids. 
50% of the people who actually test positive for steroids are from the Dominican Republic. Back in November, Marte actually suffered a hamstring injury during Winter Bowl, and while it is just speculation, many believe that he took the steroids to help heal his injury. Regardless, he should have known better, and this is an ongoing problem and it has now affected Cincinnati. You would obviously think that losing such a good player would mean that the Reds are screwed. Because, again, already they were neck and neck with the Cubs, so what happens now? Honestly, their season outlook is not going to be affected too much by this, because they have an absurd amount of depth in the infield. Instead of Marte playing third base, don't worry, you'll see Candelario. But going back onto Marte specifically, he isn't the number one person that you have to blame. The number one people that you should be blaming for this entire situation, for the entire thing that's going on across the league, is Major League Baseball, because they are allowing scumminess on every level to go on. From certain MOB teams shaking 12 year olds hands, promising them millions of dollars whenever they are eligible to enter the league. And then you have Dominican players lying about their age. This league has become careless and has not tried to prevent these issues in recent years. It's really unfortunate to see a player damaging his reputation before he even begins his rookie season. Hopefully, he learned his lesson. Hopefully, MLB tries to fix these issues that are going on across the league. Anyways, if you did enjoy, please subscribe. If not, thanks for watching anyway, and peace out.